if every weary preacher laid their Bible on the shelf, every Sunday school teacher gave their job to someone else, what if every faithful worker decided they were through, and all our prayer warriors chose to give up to what a tragedy all of this would be. Lord, it helps me to see. I can't give up no matter what comes my way. I might be weary and battle scarred, but that's okay.
Good evening. Welcome to South Ashboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Time to begin service. Good to have Eric, Laura, and Penelope with us tonight. Been missing them. So glad to see them. Just bless my heart when I see them come in. Praise God. My, what a service we had here this morning. The Holy Ghost came down in a mighty way. I tell you, only time in eternity is going to tell what happened this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know what? He's the same God tonight as he was this morning. Lord, do it again tonight. Do it again. Praise God. This time we'll have Brother Eddie come on up here and just lead us in prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, glad to be here tonight. I'm expecting God to do like He did this morning. Right. I mean, it's it's it was uh, you know, I, I told Don I said I, when the Holy Ghost hits me, He hits me. I said I can't help where I'm at or what's going on, but I'm not I'm not ashamed. I don't care. I said you know I know there's no telling how many people sees us online, and I don't care. I ain't ashamed of my God, you know, and uh, I just thank God for. <laughs> How he uses me. I thank him. And uh, y'all pray for me. You know, that he just keep me anointed to, to do his will. Uh, let's continue praying for Brother Sister Ball, um, Sister Sandra, and Sister Sarah, uh, Sister Angela, and uh, Valerie, uh, Sister Valerie and Sister Betty, uh, Sister Judy, uh, James Green, Charles Chisholm, Peggy Massey and Joanne Sanders, uh, Peggy Fogelman, uh, Sister Ball's sister, Kathy, um, Ray Park's wife, uh, and uh, Sister Susan, uh, and a lady named Crystal that they know, and uh, and also uh, uh, Sister Sharon. <laughs> How in the world did I forget your name? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Sharon, turn in a request for Prissy. Um, you know, God can heal animals too. You know, I've seen it happen. You know, I've heard stories that God, you know, he, he'll, he will heal them. And uh, she had something wrong, maybe scratched her eye or something. And uh, and all these just need a healing. Um, let's continue to pray for um, Sam Lamb, Lawson Ferguson, Arnold Spencer, Mark Aiken, Michelle Molinex, and Debbie Williams. Uh, they all need healing and salvation uh let's pray for uh nathan and brianna um pray for sister ball she's going to have cataract surgery on uh, tuesday and uh let's pray for pastor as he's having a revival all this week um let's pray pray for god to anoint him and uh that uh that he'll uh have some souls for the work that he's doing that that he will win some souls. Um, let's also pray for the anointing of uh, Brother Scott tonight as he brings the word, and also for Brother Zach as he preaches Wednesday night. And uh, uh, let's continue to pray for uh, Haley, Harper, Aaron, Jalen, Selena, Tierney. Uh, does anybody have a uh, request? Remember Sister Susan. Anybody else? Anybody else? If not, let's do right. Let's remember her unspoken request. 
Well, that's good. Amen. I mean, God can do it. Praise God. I know what that means. You know, I'm, I pray and pray for mine. It's, uh, Amen. And I, I really believe he's going to do it one of these days. Amen. Like Sister Darlene said, it's his time when, it, when, when, he, when he's going to do it in his time. And uh, like that song says, he's always on time. He might be four days late, but he's always on time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Ricky Rollins, right. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. All right, let's remember uh, Brother Branson's cousin, uh, Ricky Rollins. Anybody else? If not, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we just love you tonight, Lord. God, I thank you for everything you do. Sister Tina, she's going to stand in for Sister Sandra. We will pray for her tonight. Get Brother Zach, Brother Scott Hunt. <coughs> Brother Zach, Brother yeah. Scott, you want to come up? Yeah, Brother Scott, Zach, Brother Scott, come up. I want y'all to anoint Sister Tina. Uh, on behalf, sister for Sister Sandra.
God. God is still in control. You know, he's still able to reach down and minister. He's able to reach down and touch Sister Sandra in her house, Sister Susan in her house. All these are sick and afflicted. He's able to reach down to Lawson. He's able to reach down and touch him, Sam Lamb. All these. Praise God. Let's continue to worship with the choir to come at this time and minister in song.
ready to leave this world. I can see the Apostle Paul as he's nearing the end of his uh, journey. You know, he said to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, he's going to know he's going to be with the Lord. And that's the same way with us. The Lord's coming back soon. I truly believe it. If I didn't believe it, I'd just quit. But I believe in the Lord's coming back. I, I, I love the Lord. There's nothing to go back to. Praise God. I just thank the Lord. You know, we'd be wasting our time if we didn't think Jesus was coming back. But he said that's the whole uh, uh, belief in our uh, doctrine is, you know, he's a risen Savior and he's coming back for his own. He gave his life for it and he's coming back for us. Praise God. Let's continue to worship and give and get to us to come and see the evening offering. Brother Zach, would you pray over this time of worship? Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Yes. Amen. God richly bless you for your faithfulness and giving. I had a birthday girl on Friday, Sister Darlene. I think you had a birthday on Friday. Thursday, Thursday. If you will, come stand up here at the front. We'll stand and sing happy birthday to Sister Darlene. Anybody else had a birthday since last Sunday? Announcements: We need some uh, volunteers for the youth group. For we still got the months of May, June, and August open. If you're interested in taking some time and investing in our youth, take one of these nights. It'll be a blessing to you. It'll, we can bless them, and it'll also be a blessing to you. Praise God. Uh, be in prayer for Brother Scott as he preaches tonight. For Brother Zach as he preaches on Wednesday night, and for our pastors, he's preaching at. Uh, over at Denton this week at the Lights of Christ Holiness Church that God will give uh, souls for their labor. Amen. Praise God. Justified by the blood of Christ. Romans 5, 8, uh, chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were sent... We, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He shed his blood and died for our sins. He rose again for our justification. So if he died for us, let us live for him. Amen. Praise God. Let's continue to worship as a Sister Amy, Sister Brady, and Sister Harris come and minister in song. Sandra Bragg on the Lord while we're getting ready. We should have a lot of people want to do that after the song.
Praise God. He is great and greatly to be praised. He does miracles. Some people say, I've never seen a miracle. Well, look at me. I'm a miracle. God took my life. It was in uh, deep sin, and he changed me, saved me, and put my foot on, on a rock and uh, established my going. I thank God. Brother Scott, come on at this time. Brother Scott's going to come at this time and bring the word of God. Praise God. already sung about what the Okay, I, I have a live mic now. I can hear it myself, so uh, like beginning in verse 13 of First Thessalonians chapter 4. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we, we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we, are, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yeah, let's give God a hand clap of praise as you're seated. The rapture is a soon-coming pre-tribulation event. Christians are not appointed to wrath, and the tribulation will be a time of unspeakable wrath on all inhabitants of the earth. Every sign of the coming of the Lord has been fulfilled. The only thing left is for him to come and come for his bride. So who will go when he comes? Those who are ready will go. Matthew 25, 10 through 13 explains that they were ready. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Well, Jesus was talking about people in the church here. They had the ability to go to the marriage, but they were unprepared for it. They, they had let that oil run out of their lamps, the, and, the, and the Lord called them fools. Uh, 
it's one thing if a person tells us they're this type of, we believe some stuff that they believe is foolish, but it's something altogether different whenever the Lord himself calls us foolish for not being prepared for his coming. Uh, verse 13, it says, Watch therefore, for you know not, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So Jesus is going to be an unexpected visitor for some people. You know, uh, and sometimes you show up at somebody's house and they don't have their house ready and they won't let you come in until it's ready. But there's not going to be any time to wait whenever he comes knocking. Whenever we hear, whenever that voice, that archangel sounds, uh, there's not going to be any time to straighten anything out. So it's a daily, continual walk. If he said we don't know the day or the hour, we don't know the second. That second that something creeps into your heart that shouldn't be there could be the second that he comes out of the sky looking for his, looking for his bride. You know, whenever it comes, whenever he comes, it's going to be too late for that house to keep up. So keep your house clean and in order. You know, I'm not talking about your house. I'm talking about your spiritual house, the temple of God. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the goodman of the house had, had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You know, the Lord compared his coming uh, to the, the same thing as a thief breaking in, and that's a matter of life and death. We have the castle doctrine in our state. If somebody tries to break into your house, you have, you have a right to defend yourself using deadly force. So, you know, if, if I ever heard a thief saying he was going to break into my house, I'm going to be waiting on him. I'm not going to give him a chance to catch me unawares. And whenever he tries to come in, he's going to find something he doesn't want to find. So whenever the Lord comes, I don't want him to find something he doesn't want to find. And this not knowing the, the day or the hour rules out the tribula the, uh, the rapture being uh, mid-trib or post-trib because the, the exact time, the, the length of the days is given in the Bible and if it was mid or post tribulation, tribulation uh, we would know the exact day that uh, the Lord would be coming. This is a time that not even Jesus knew the day or the hour, only the Father. Now, if the Son of God Himself didn't know the 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 day or the hour, uh, how much more do I need to be ready, prepared every single second of every single day? Uh, guarding my heart to uh, keep anything from creeping in that the enemy would put there to, to cause me to miss this time that the Lord's coming for us. First Thessalonians 5 and 3 says, For when they shall say, Peace is safety, then shall sudden destruction come upon them as prevail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. Uh, what's going on in Israel and around the world should catch every Christian's eye because that's just something else the Lord told us to watch out for. There be wars and rumors of wars, and there be a man that that come and try to straighten all that out. And uh, I don't want to be here whenever he comes through talking about that. You know, we're not in darkness that that day should overtake us as a thief. The Lord told us what to look for, and He told us to look up. The to me, the most important part is looking up, because if you get your eyes on all that's going on around us, you'll be one of those that your heart fails you for fear. But if you know that the Lord's coming for you, it doesn't matter what happens to this planet, this this world. We have the, the Lord coming for us. Uh, let the bombs fly. There's not going to be a bomb touch those streets of gold. You know, whenever he comes for us, we're going to be safe forevermore. Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and shall stand before the Son of Man. Now, the only thing that will make us worthy is believing in the one that he sent. Uh, it's that blood of Jesus that washes you, that can uh, keep you, cleanse you from every sin. And that's the only way that you're going to make this rapture, staying, staying with God, staying in that blood of Jesus and staying pure in his sight. Those looking for his appearing will go. Hebrews 9, 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We're looking for the Lord by living that life above sin. Now, 
what can compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. You know, we have uh, problems that we go through. We suffer, every one of us. But the, it's the way of the transgressor that's hard. It's the Lord that helps us along that will that'll make us ready for his coming. There's a crown of righteousness to be given to all them that also that love is appearing. Now, I love the appearing of the Lord because I know that there's nothing that's got me here that's going to hinder me from being ready wherever he comes. It's, it's not worth it. Everything that I've laid down for the Lord, I, I don't care anything about picking it back up because I, we're not just being, you know, I, I like to think of the rapture as not just a one, one-time thing. I'm being raptured every day. Part of me is being pulled out of this world every day. It's a progressive thing. That's what I think of sanctification as. I'm getting closer and closer to that rapture. It's a continual work in our hearts. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Uh, Jesus isn't coming back for a dead anything. Now, the, the dead in Christ arise, but they're alive spiritually. They're with the Lord already. It's their bodies that's going to be resurrected. You know, I, I like to think the kind of uh, church service that we had this morning, people that can have that kind of service are the people that the Lord's going to come after. It's not going to be some, uh, somebody dragging into church, go through their routines and motions. It says he's life. Christ is our life. He's not a, uh, he doesn't uh, give us a dead religion. Those forms and uh, machinery that you go through, he gives us life. That's what that's what we had here today. There's a river of living water flowing through this place. Holy people will go in the rapture. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man should see the Lord. Now, that word cuts deep. If you put it into just everyday talking, like one of us would say, it's holiness or it's hell, because that's what the word says. Now, but you have to understand what holiness, what it is. It's not, a, it's not a doctrine. It's not a dress code. It's a condition of your heart. It's what you've got in your heart will come forward, and that's where you see holiness. That's when you see somebody that dresses right. It's not because they've been forced to by somebody in the church. It was whenever they go out in that world, they're going to look like they, they represent somebody. And we do represent somebody. We represent the Lord. I can tell you the Lord Jesus wouldn't walk around naked. The, the dress code that was given in this Bible, you know, um, Adam and Eve, they knew God better than any of us. And whenever they sinned, the very first thing they did was try to cover up. And when God saw how they were covered up, it wasn't good enough. He made them coats of skin that would come down to their knees. Like he made sure that they were covered whenever they, whenever they understood right from wrong. He made sure that they were covered. And if they knew God and they knew they needed to cover up and God gave them the exact clothes that they needed to wear, I know that I need to be dressed right. I need to be dressed appropriately whenever I go out representing this church, whenever I go out representing the Lord Jesus. Revelations 20 and 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Uh, the rapture beats the alternative. I'd rather be on fire for God now than to be set on fire eternally afterwards. Uh, there's, there's nothing in this world that's worth it. Uh, according as he had chosen us and him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Uh, before time began, the Son of God agreed to die for our sins. But before it was all made, he, God's God, so he knew what was going to happen. He knew that his creation would fail, and he needed something that could redeem them. And Jesus made that agreement all those eons ago. But It, it boggles your mind. Uh, you know, our, our minds can't comprehend a time before time. But in that time before time, Jesus made that, made that agreement with the Father that he would come and redeem us. Now, at that same time that he made that decision, it said that we were, uh, let me, 
at that same time that he was uh, he made that decision that the, the same decision was made that we should live holy before him as this plan is as eternal as God is his holiness doesn't change his uh, the what he requires out of his people hadn't changed if anything it's got more strict because we're in the time of grace now we have the ability within us through the Holy Ghost living in us uh, we have a, a greater advantage that the Israelites didn't have he told them to do it, and he gives us the ability to do it. So we need to do it. We need to uh, represent the Lord the way he wants to be represented. Those that keep his commandments will go in the rapture. Revelations 22 and 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now what it doesn't say there is just as important as what it does say. Those that don't keep his commandments won't have that right. They're not going to have right to the tree of life. They're not going to have right to go in, this, uh, go in that city of God. Hearers of the word that don't do only deceive themselves. Now, why would somebody want to go to a Bible-believing church and not apply what they hear to their life? All they're doing is condemning their self. Uh, we, we're blessed to have a uh, pastor here that preaches Bible to us three or more times a week. And we need to get in with his vision and not cause kind of uh, any schism. I, I believe that, I, I don't believe there is any here because the way that the Holy Ghost moved in here this morning, you don't see that in churches where there's division at. But let's, let's stay in line with God's will. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And hereby do we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Uh, we don't think that we know. We know that we know. There's peace in our heart whenever we walk with God. There's a peace. There's uh, knowing that God Almighty is on our side. Uh, we don't have to have guesswork about this. If, if we're keeping his commandments, then we know that we know him. So know that you know him by keeping his commandments. What he, what he wants you to do, do it. He'll put on your heart what, what you need to uh, take up or lay down. And whenever he moves like that, obey him. Give, your heart, give uh, every bit of your heart to the Lord. If some pray and seek God and are accounted worthy to escape, then there are some that won't pray and won't be accounted worthy to escape. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. There are professing Christians with their hands in the plow and their eyes on the world. Uh, somebody that's plowing and looking behind them are going to do more damage than they're going to do good. The, the roads that have been laid out before them already, they're going to be off into those. I've never ran a plow, but I ran a tiller. And you can't be looking all over the place whenever you're running a tiller. As, as skinny as I was, the thing would throw you over the top of it if, you, if it caught the right rock. But that is, uh, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. This takes, this takes uh, observance, the dedication. It takes seriousness. Now, you see people that's not serious, that don't come to the altar much, and they, they sort of, you, ne you never know when they're going to miss church. They're, they're more out than they are in. Uh, that person's not ready for the rapture. Uh, the the way the Holy Ghost is moving in here is more like, uh, I like to try to encourage you here. W whenever the Holy Ghost moves like it did this morning, come on down to the altar. Uh, I I had a, a screaming toddler that I could it kept me out of the altar this morning, and it broke my heart sitting back there hearing God blessing people in here. I wanted to be down in the middle of it, but if you don't have a screaming toddler, come on down to the altar and seek God. 1 John 2, 15 through 16 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Now, remember Lot's wife. Now, we think about Sodom, we know that the men there were evil. But there was something there that kept Lot and his family there. They had 
what they felt like safety. You know, you, if you live in the city, then you were safe from uh, marauders coming and robbing you and killing you. But, uh, the people there were wicked, but they felt like they had safety. But Lot, um, Lot's wife thought that part of it was good. She, that's the reason she looked back on it, and that's the reason she got turned to salt. I want to be salt of the world, but I don't want to be that kind of salt. You know, the... Uh, I I used to be a big football fan. Whenever I'd get off, whenever we'd quit having church at my old church, I'd run home to see what was going on. Uh, now, I'm not condemning you if you like sports. I'm just telling you my testimony. Uh, being in North Carolina, I was a Panthers fan, sadly. You know, they, they won just enough to keep you interested in it. And whenever I quit watching it, you know, I, I still see it. On TV, something like I see, like the news about it, and they've got a new woke owner. Well, uh, if he's woke, I'd rather stay asleep. Um, but the they got the they hired the first uh, transgender cheerleader, and for one thing, they don't even need cheerleaders out there. That ain't nothing but a way to cause you to lust after something. So uh, if you if you watch sports, you have to be quick to look away whenever, whenever they go to show the cheerleaders and whenever, whenever they go to show in commercials because it's all there to cause lust to come up in your heart. But I, I don't miss it. You know, I, I quit watching it because they were all making their political statements. I didn't want to hear it. But I, now that that's died down, I still don't want to go back because it wasn't nothing but a waste of time. You know, that Sunday evening, instead of sitting around watching a ball game, I can be praying for the, ser for the service that evening. I can be seeking God and hearing from Him. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And God's enemies lose at the end of the book. All of His enemies will lose. Not just the ones that are listed, the, the beast and the false prophet and the devil. Like everybody that's the enemy of God that's, on, that's walked this planet, they're going to they're gonna lose in the end. Don't get your eyes on what some ungodly person has. Don't don't have that desire for what they have. Be content with such things as you have. The Lord said, He never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, be happy with what you have. And don't look at what the worldly person has because that's the same thing as looking at the world. The lukewarm will be left behind. Revelation 3, 15, 16 says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, lukewarmness makes Jesus sick. You know, the, if somebody's cold, God can do something with them. If somebody's on fire, God can really do something with them. He can use them. But that lukewarm person that's uh, just sits back on the pew, they're, they're here just going through the motions. That's the kind of person that God make, that, make, that makes Jesus sick. And, you know, you think about what Jesus did for us. He, it, it took all of his willpower to go to that cross. Uh, he knew what was coming before he ever, before he ever got here. He knew, what, he knew he'd be tried by wicked men. He knew he'd be mocked and ridiculed. He knew he'd die a gruesome death on that cross. And, that took all of his willpower to do that, to, to uh, die in obedience to the will of the Father. So we should show some willpower in, in serving him. He gave up everything, gave up heaven, uh, come, come to earth, uh, lived as a poor man. He, the, the only true king died for us. We can live a life that we, uh, we can honor that. We can honor the sacrifice he made for us. And we can present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable not just halfway holy, partially acceptable. Uh, whenever you read about they, wherever they had a sacrifice, they cut it up into pieces where all of it could get on the altar. If just part of you is hanging off of the altar, there's not enough there. The, the, it will be a way for the enemy to, to put a foothold in your life. But don't misinterpret what this scripture means because the cold won't be raptured either. The... That, all that means is uh, God would rather have you cold where he can warm you up. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, whenever a Christian grows cold in their walk with the Lord, 
you can put money on it. There's iniquity in their heart. Uh, if you walk, if you walk with God with a with a clean, pure heart, it, that fire just keeps growing. It it grows and grows until it consumes you, until there's nothing left of you, and it's all God. You know, there were plenty of bushes in the desert that, uh, where Moses was keeping Jethro's flock, but there was only one of them that God spoke out of. It was the one that was on fire. If you want God to speak through you, get on fire for God. Uh, those bushes that were just hot there beside it, he didn't speak through them. Those, those bushes that were out several, several yards away that were cold, they didn't, he didn't speak through them. It was the one on fire that God spoke through. And God will speak through us where we get on fire. If, if people see you living this life, they know whether you care for God or not. If you want to reach your lost family, your lost loved ones, uh, get on fire and stay on fire for God because that fire is spread. Get close to them, that fire is spread. Just keep witnessing, keep uh, showing the love of God. I'm getting ready to come to a close, sister. I'm ready to come to the piano. Can we all stand? The day is coming, but will you be going? Anyone that thinks they'll just get right after the rapture, they don't believe what this Bible says about heaven, hell, the rapture, uh, the tribulation, none of it. They, they're deceiving themselves by not, uh, by not, keep, by not doing this word. The, the risks are too high and the rewards are too high to be playing around and miss, the, miss this time that's coming. Amen. Can you get everyone to pray? I want to ask you this evening, you know, you're not here by accident. If there's anything God wants you to lay down, you come to the altar and do it now. We'll help, help you pray. God will give you grace. The Lord can touch you this evening and help you. Praise God. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd touch someone here tonight, God. Lord, I've done the best I could, Lord. I know this has been a meager effort, Lord, but I pray, God, that you'd touch somebody with it, Lord. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost to grip somebody's heart, Lord, bring conviction to them. Lord, God, when we come to this altar seeking you, God, I pray, Lord, that we find what we need here this evening. If there's nothing that the Lord's laid on your heart to lay down, and you just want to come down and, and pray to be ready for that time. Be accounted worthy. Come down, let's pray and seek God. <laughs>